Hello friends, this is Akul Mac Live. My name is Chandrakant. Today we want to discuss how you can actually win more clients using the uh, legitimate policies and practices available provided by social media and what has gone wrong to the age old tried method of doing drip marketing. And uh, this is very, very important uh, episode. So please stick around as an outstanding show coming up. Friends also want to remind that there is a free giveaway. So stick around till the end of the video. We will tell you how you can win your free giveaway. Hello friends, let me welcome my guest today. Uh, his name is Mr. Nevergun and he is chairman of uh, MindFit Limited. He is joining us from London. So without further ado, let me invite Neville to the show. Good morning, CK. Good morning, everybody. A bright sunny day in London, even if it's a little cold. We've got an exciting subject to talk about today. And it, I suppose it's in the digital transformation arena. Although for those people that know me very well, I don't like talking about digital transformation because transformation doesn't exist. It's an evolution. It's a change. It's actually getting used to the changing environment that's out there. And digital is only one. But we're going to talk about lead generation today. So, CK, lead generation. How has it changed? What happened in 2015? Let's go back five or six years to normal times. No? <laughs> when, when, when business was a lot simpler than it is today in many people's eyes. So what happened in 2015? What did you do for lead generation? Well, uh, it was a tested, tried uh, model of uh, sending emails and you keep spamming everyone in the world uh, using fictitious name. And uh, there was a mechanism that even Microsoft favored it uh, because uh, you can send uh, from one email, you can send up to 300, uh, uh, 301 email. I mean, you can spam legally and in a month you can send up to uh, 3000 emails from a single email account. So the Microsoft technology allowed all that and uh, this was uh, used and misused by everyone. No one is spared when I say used and misused because everyone across the world, they were spamming each other and uh, there was a cost to it. There was a CRM cost, there was people, there were uh, managers to manage the campaigns and the whole thing will drip down into one or two leads or maybe five leads in a month. I think that was driving all the business globally. Uh, after 2015, what happened was uh, this whole drip uh, uh, email spamming and there were more regulations came in, uh, especially in Europe to start with. Then all countries joined in. Even now uh, in India also there is anti-spamming law. So the whole lot of uh, legalities are there and because of that this whole drip thing is going to spam folders. And because of that, uh, you know, all of us keep getting hundreds of uh, thousands of email daily. We keep deleting them so it didn't it didn't work after 2015 so obviously there was a need there was a gap in the market to find a new mechanism to do lead generation because that is where it starts if you don't have leads you don't have business oh you're absolutely right if you turn up leads you've got no business no customers so um this is pretty fundamental to the success or survival of any businesses and and just going back on to 2015 because we were all inundated with lots of emails. Um, we didn't know whether we'd opted in to an email funnel or we'd opted out and they were still spamming us. Um, but it came down to companies then became very precious about their data. So if they had you on their database, you would regularly get a, a call perhaps or an email to say, you know, you're on a bait database, we thought you might like this. If you're not interested, yeah, let us know. But there, was, there wasn't an unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email. But of course, as you were saying, the laws started to change. And now every email comes with an unsubscribe at the very end. Um, I've noticed recently how small those unsubscribe letters are. I mean, so if the, if the the main body of the email is, say, font 12-ish, so it's easy to read. 
scroll down to the bottom and the unsubscribe <laughs> is like font two or maybe four. So in other words, they're, they're desperate to keep you on the database. Um, and the advice that I would give now is don't be that desperate. Be transparent, be honest. If you really are giving people an option to unsubscribe, make it clear. So that's, that's lesson one of the day because customers want honesty. They want transparency even more today than ever before. Um, and COVID, interestingly enough, because we're going to skip forward because things did change in 2016, 17, 18, 19, but they massively changed in 2020. Because whereas before, the seller, you, the company, had most of the power. You had the data. You had the information about your products, even if you had a website. But you were almost in control. And, you know, the, the burst of the internet allowed customers to be a little bit more in control. So they could go and Google what you do and see who else does it. The reality of life is people didn't have time to do that. So they would go back to their trusted sources. However, last year changed everything because now all of a sudden people have got time. And they're far, I don't know if you agree with me, CK, but people are far more knowledgeable now than they ever were before. In fact, they could list, you know, half a dozen websites that sell the same thing. And they're just going to go and see if it's a product, if it's a consumer product, a disposable product, if you like, they're just literally going to find the cheapest because it's the same brand and it's just delivered the cheapest and it might be there quicker. And that's what Amazon focuses on, focuses on getting you into a prime membership so that you can literally get it during the day or at worst case next day. So things have changed. I mean, do you think that consumers in general are now far more savvy because of the time they've had to go and investigate? Absolutely, uh, Naval. In fact, as a seller, you have to be extra smart now because uh, there are uh, players in the consumer market like Amazon and Walmart, uh, and they are trying to fight uh, for the market share. And when it comes to selling services, it is a totally different ball game. Nobody wants to buy any service from anyone. So it has to be uh, sold in a very different manner. And uh, most of the SMEs are uh, and startups are fitting in that area because if you don't know how to sell your services, then you will, you will never have clients. And especially when you can't send emails and you can't generate a drip method of making a funnel, uh, then obviously you have to have uh, some other techniques to uh, reach out to your clients so that they can, uh, you know, uh, you get, they can impress with you and they uh, end up deciding to buy from you. Usually from my experience, I can say that uh, about seven to 12 touch points are required even before the customer decides to even talk to you. That means they would have seen, they, they must see you at least 12 times in a period of a month before they even decide to even talk to you because you know it is all crowded uh, space uh, you know everybody thinks that they are uh, uh, you know uh, jack of all trades so you have to create and that is another point uh, Nabil I want to make is that uh, because of this crowd a lot of people are getting caught in me too syndrome don't you think so Nabil I think it's, it's it's affecting so many people without realizing they are doing the same thing over and over again and reducing their chances of winning anything. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll coin a phrase that people heard last year, and there's a clue for you. Herd mentality. Me too. You know, get everyone in the, in the same place, doing the same thing, behaving the same way, looking for the pattern, in essence. Um, but the interesting thing is you mentioned a funnel and a methodology. Um, because lead generation right the way through to sale is a process. And what I'm finding fascinating is that although the process hasn't changed, 
because fundamentally, what what are you doing in the in that lead generation to sales process? You're capturing the imagination of the customer. You're making them aware. You're basically saying why you're better if they choose you over somebody else. You're not most good companies never point out the competition, but they say they're the best. And they say try us out. You know, some even offer a 60 day free trial. Um, it's not a free trial because you've got to pay up front. <laughs> so and the likelihood is after 60 days you won't be sending it back. So it's very clever marketing, advertising, if you like, but the process is still the same. How do I capture someone, capture their imagination? Now it's a bit more difficult, as you say, because the consumer is becoming more knowledgeable. Well, knowledge is also, knowledge is power, but knowledge is very dangerous as well, because you might think you know something, but the reality is you don't know the ins and outs. So the key to this sales process, if we can call it that, is that hasn't changed. It's just the medium you use the sale process that's changed. So previously, the medium or the technology was email, well, well known, well proven. But even then, lots of small business advisors were saying, you need to be on YouTube. You need to have a video. People need to see who you are. So all this transparency issue, people buy from people. How many times have we said that in the past on our many discussions over the last couple of years? Um, now that arena is coming to the forefront. And we're demonstrating it here. You know, we're having an interview over 6,000 miles and we do it on a regular basis, almost every day of the week. And we know that that actually is what people want to hear. They want to see almost like an exhibition. It's a 24-7 exhibition. When you go to an exhibition and then you go the following year and the following year and the following year, after three years, you notice the same company is in the same place in the same exhibition. And they're saying the same thing, typically. But it's after that repetition and maybe you said, you know, between seven and 12 touch points. If you see someone at an exhibition three years on the trot, you actually think, oh, I can trust this lot because they're still around. And it's funny how the mind works, but that's how, that's why people say, I want that stand in that place, you know, next year. And they book up early. That's their sales process. So the key, the key question is, number one, we're not going to tell you what the sales process is because you can go and look it up. Go and Google it because it's pretty much the same for everybody. Um, but what mediums now have changed so much in that whereas email was a must-do, was a go-to, what mediums do you think small businesses in particular should be focused on today? What are the must-do mediums that you you should be using? Well, Neville, I think the uh, world has uh, moved around uh, more than 360 degrees many times now in the last one year. And uh, what I would like to suggest is that it's not only YouTube that is important and uh, it's basically all of them are important because all of them carry a different, uh, uh, all different platforms carry a different algorithm. So, for instance, if I'm allowed to talk for a few minutes, uh, YouTube picks up video and show on the wall of people if your delivery and your video and your subject is very catchy, uh, which means that if your video is being watched, the YouTube will recommend more and more. So if your video is being watched more and more, you will get more and more traffic. That is how the algorithm of YouTube works. And the basic difference between YouTube and Facebook is how and what. So when people go to YouTube, they actually search for how. They want to know how this thing happens and that is when your video comes up. Whereas on Facebook, they were given what is available. 
So that is where the difference is and that is where the technology or your campaign will differ because when you're doing how video you go to YouTube and you're going when you're making a what video about your your services or product you actually focus on uh, Facebook bigger than both these platforms is Instagram because that is uh, uh, designed for a video distribution and Instagram will give you more than 2000 3000 views instantly and and usually these are all reel based uh, uh, offerings so you make short videos and uh, uh, and use Instagram to drive uh, traffic either to Facebook or to YouTube so these are the ways to do it and the fourth is Twitter which has tied up with a TV company called Periscope and uh, that has the ability to basically churn and uh, you know create opinion because of micro blogging website so you should have your videos fine-tuned for Twitter platform so all four are very very important and uh, 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 Neville you must have noticed that uh, now uh, LinkedIn is feeling the heat recently they have started uh, a product feature so far they didn't have a product feature I mean it's a pity I mean they are uh, business networking they have sales navigator but they didn't know how to put a product there Whereas uh, uh, Facebook provides a uh, launch pad for your products and services. So now they are doing a beta testing. Uh, LinkedIn is also catching up. They are now doing uh, video platform beta testing. So all of these are very, very important. And all of these have different characteristics. That is, that's so well defined, CK. And the interesting thing is people are going to say, well, how do I do that? And the interesting thing is you're, you practice what you preach because you're already on, you know, Acomac is on all of these platforms and doing what you say. So the how to is always listed on YouTube. The what is always on Facebook. And it's so simple when you think about it, but again, not many people really understand the marginal difference between how to do it and what you do. And people, I mean, I, I Google all the time, you know, when when I need to refresh my mind into putting new tiles up or doing something around the house. And I will always say, how do I? You know, how do I tile a bathroom? You know, and immediately, guess what? All the YouTube videos come up. It's almost like there's this, this inbuilt mechanism that's out there. All right. And it is an inbuilt mechanism because it's called an algorithm. And that's where YouTube is actually focused on. And Facebook is focused on the what's. This is what we do. Do you want to buy a book? Here's where to buy it. You know, the what, the what, the what. But the interesting thing for me is who's coming up with the why? <laughs> why should I buy this book? <laughs> you know, what's the purpose of this book? Um, and uh, we'll leave that for another day because that's a more difficult question. Um, but it's the most important question to ask yourself when you're going to do anything. Why am I doing this? You know, why am I becoming part of the herd, a me too, when actually I should be doing something else? Um, I suppose you might call that self-help arena. But that's for another day. So, CK, I, as ever, you know, interesting discussion. I think we've given people um, a bit more of an insight as to what to do for lead generation and generate sales in this digital changing economy. And more importantly, I'm gonna plug Acomac here because just go and look where Acomac is, how it does it, what it does, and follow it, copy it, because it's the right thing to do. And then come back and tell us how it's working for you. If it's not working very well, come and criticize it. Come and tell it. Come, we'll try and help you do it better. But as ever, fascinating subject, lead generation. Without customers, you've got no business. And I think that's probably where we should end today. Absolutely, Neville. In fact, uh, people can contact us. We can tell them how to do things. There are many things. It's not, we have just uh, touched the tip of the iceberg. There is a, a concept called merch. So, you know, if you contact us, we will tell you what is merch and we will take that uh, through and uh, give you the strategy around it. But for today, I think uh, we have spoken enough. 
uh, inviting people to communicate with us and based on your comments we will actually bring you in the next video live with naval gun until then i like to say goodbye naval goodbye ck goodbye everybody go and enjoy your day and uh, just copy akomak because um they're doing it right see you soon bye bye we have some unique akulmac memorabilia which will make you look outstanding the graphics on these corporate gifts are based on the global best business practices to become recipient of one of these gifts for free you have to watch this video till the end and provide your valuable comments or you can also share your experiences the person who makes the best comment would be chosen to become a recipient of these beautiful akulmac gift absolutely free delivered to your doorsteps the winner would also get a chance to be invited live as a distinguished panelist during our next video what are you waiting for friends please subscribe akulmac and smash that like button